Quand vous êtes prêts, on est là. Bonjour tout le monde. Welcome to this Good morning. briefing. Today we'll hear remarks from Dr. Howard New and Major General Danny Fortin from the Public Health Agency of Canada, as well as Dr. Tom Wong from Indigenous Services Canada. With them to answer questions, we have Ariane Reza from Public Services and Procurement Canada. Aujourd'hui, nous entendrons des présentations du Dr. Howard New et du Major General Danny Fortin de l'Agence de Santé Publique du Canada. Today we will be hearing from Major General Fortin and Dr. Tom Wong, as well as Dr. Nu. They are accompanied by Ariane Reza from PSPC. You have the floor. Okay, thank you, merci. Dr. Nu. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us at this technical briefing on the COVID-19 vaccine rollout in Canada. With me today are Major General Danny Fortin, Vice President of Logistics and Operations at the Public Health Agency of Canada, and Dr. Tom Wong, Chief Medical Officer of Public Health of Indigenous, Indigenous Services Canada. We will each provide brief remarks and then open the floor up to your questions. Ariane Reza, the Assistant Deputy Minister for Public Services and Procurement Canada, is also here to assist in answering your questions. As of today, more than 1,153,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered in Canada. This means that 2.4% of Canadians have received at least one dose of vaccine and 0.5% have received two doses. Also, more than 50% of healthcare workers targeted for priority vaccination and more than 50% of residents of congregate living settings for seniors have received their first dose. It is important for us all to remember that the vast majority of Canadians remain susceptible to COVID-19. And we continue to see outbreaks in hospitals, in long-term care homes, correctional facilities, congregate living settings, indigenous communities, and more remote areas of the country. Taking these realities into account, I will emphasize, as I do here almost every week, that the key to controlling COVID-19 is to follow public health guidance on gatherings, social distancing, wearing masks, and other measures as we wait our turn to be vaccinated. Thank you. Bonjour. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on this technical briefing on the distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine rollout in Canada. With me today are Major General Danny Fortin, Vice President of Logistics and Operations at the Public Health Agency of Canada, and Dr. Tom Wong, Chief Medical Officer of Public Health of Indigenous Services Canada. We will each provide brief remarks and then open the floor up to your questions. Ariane Reza, Assistant Deputy Minister for Public Services and Procurement Canada, is also here to assist in answering your questions. As of today, more than 1,153,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered in Canada. This means that 2.4% of Canadians have received at least one dose of vaccine and 0.5% have received two doses. Also, more than 50% of healthcare workers targeted for priority vaccination and more than 50% of residents of congregate living settings for seniors have received their first dose. It is important for us all to remember that the vast majority of Canadians remain susceptible to COVID-19, and we continue to see outbreaks in hospitals and long-term care homes, correctional facilities, congregate living settings, Indigenous communities, and more remote areas of the country. Taking these realities into account, I will emphasize, as I do here almost every week, that the key to controlling COVID-19 is to follow public health guidance on gatherings, social distancing, wearing masks, and other measures as we wait our turn to be vaccinated. Thank you. And I will now ask Major General Fortin to speak. Bonjour à tous. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, to date, the government of Canada has distributed a cumulative uh, total of 1.4 million doses of both Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna throughout the country. The distribution of this week's shipment of 70,000 Pfizer, BioNTech doses is almost complete. The manufacturer has indicated that we should receive approximately 403,000 doses uh, next week and 475,000 doses 
the uh, last week of February. Pfizer has also confirmed shipments into March. As of now, the government of Canada anticipates receiving 444,000 doses weekly for the first two weeks of March. The quantity of doses in the upcoming shipments also reflect the recent label change authorization from Health Canada. And for the reminder of March, we expect to share numbers with the provinces as soon as possible. We are on track to receive 4 million doses by the end of March. The Vaccine National Operations Center continues to work closely with provinces to understand their needs in enabling uh, equipment following Health Canada label uh, change authorization to Pfizer-BioNTech uh, vaccine. Um, the NOC also, uh, the NOC's work uh, includes ensuring provinces have sufficient stock of recommended syringes as previously mentioned. As for Moderna, last week, Government of Canada received 180,000 doses. The vast majority of those are now distributed. Uh, and the final shipments, small shipments to remote and indigenous uh, communities will be completed uh, next week. The first Moderna shipment, uh, sorry, the next uh, Moderna shipment uh, is expected to arrive in Canada uh, next, uh, the week of February 22nd, and will uh, include 168,000 doses. The remaining doses of Moderna to round out their uh, commitment for first quarter of 2 million doses are expected in March. Government of Canada continues to work with the manufacturer to confirm uh, the exact doses and dates for upcoming shipments. Now, moving ahead, uh, we are still expecting to receive 20 million doses of both approved authorized vaccines between April and June. The delivery of vaccines to Canadians is, a, is an ongoing effort, and we work relentlessly on ensuring that it's done as timely and as effectively as possible. So despite temporary delays, efforts are going uh, as expected thanks to uh, collaboration of uh, all levels of government. Alors, bonjour à tous et à toutes. Good afternoon, everyone. To date, the Government of Canada has distributed a cumulative total of 1.4 million doses of both Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna vaccines to provinces and territories. The distribution of this week's shipment of 70,000 Pfizer-BioNTech doses is almost complete. The manufacturer has indicated that we should receive approximately 403,000 doses next week and 475,000 doses in the last week of February. Pfizer has also confirmed shipments going into March. As of now, the Government of Canada anticipates receiving 444,000 doses weekly for the first two weeks of March. The quantity of doses in the upcoming shipments all reflect the recent label change authorization from Health Canada. For the remainder of March, we expect to share numbers with the provinces as soon as possible. We are on track to receive 4 million doses by the end of March. The National Operations Centre continues to work with the provinces to understand their needs for enabling equipment following Health Canada's label change authorization to Pfizer to reflect that each vial of its COVID-19 vaccine contains six doses. The NOx work includes ensuring provinces have sufficient stock of recommended syringes. The Government of Canada received 180,000 doses for, from Moderna last week. The majority of those, 170,000 doses approximately, have been distributed with final small shipments to be completed next week. The next Moderna shipment is expected to arrive in Canada the week of February 22nd and be around 168,000 doses. The remaining doses of Moderna to uh, round out its first quarter commitment of 2 million doses are expected in March. And the Government of Canada continues to work with the manufacturer to confirm the exact doses and dates for upcoming shipments. In conclusion, the Government of Canada is still expecting to receive 20 million doses from uh, between April and June, rather. The delivery of vaccines to Canadians is an ongoing effort on the part of the entire team. And despite temporary delays, 
that we have just experienced. Efforts are going as expected, thanks to collaboration at all levels of government. Thank you very much, and uh, I will give the floor to my colleague. I want to acknowledge that I'm on the unceded territory of the Algonquin people. With increased risk of transmission of COVID-19 variants, it is essential for us to double down on public health measures such as hand washing, wearing a mask, avoiding gatherings, and staying home if we are sick or if we are being asked to self-isolate and getting the COVID vaccine. We are seeing encouraging vaccine uptake in indigenous and territorial communities. As of February the 8th, over 72,000 COVID vaccine doses have been administered in 344 First Nations, Inuit, and territorial communities, reaching 12% of the population vaccine dose target at a rate that's six times that of Canada's. For example, for example, because of the vaccine clinics in the Inuit communities, Nunatsivut saw that percentage increase to 70% in uptake amongst adults. A vaccination clinic for COVID-19 led by indigenous communities along with the provinces, with the province rather, opened in Winnipeg this week. And this clinic is for health workers who are working in First Nations communities in Manitoba as well as traditional healers and keepers of knowledge. The clinic will have about 900 available appointments for first doses over the coming days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wong. We're now going to move on to questions. Thank you. Limit yourselves to one question and one follow-up. You can ask your question and one follow-up in the official language of your choice. Thank you. Our first question is from Karina Roman from CBC News. Please go ahead. Yes, hi there. Um, you know, you've got uh, the opposition uh, criticizing the rollout of the vac vaccine from the very beginning. Um, today you have, you know, block leader Blanchette Say, characterizing the call that the, the Prime Minister made to India as, as we're going begging for vaccines. What do you make of that characterization and um, the idea that, you know, even though you keep saying we're going to get our vaccines by September and everyone who wants one will get one, how can you be so confident that that's going to happen when, you you know, we've had all these supply problems and you've got this characterization that now we've gone begging for vaccines to other countries? Dr. Yu, should I start, Danny, or do you want to go first? Uh, sure, uh, this General Forte here. Uh, um, I, I can tell you that uh, we are working with the, the two approved vaccines. Um, we will get uh, 40 million of each of those vaccines over the coming months in total. Um, we're working with um, the, uh, we're, we're on trajectory for a total of 6 million doses at the end of this quarter. 20 million to the next one and so on and so forth. So uh, I, I think it's very promising. We're on the right uh, trajectory, certainly with uh, the information that I passed on with Pfizer. And uh, we're working very closely with those manufacturers to provide those numbers. Um, so that's what I would offer at this point. Yeah, Dr. Yu, what I would say, if you look at uh, what we um, indicated uh, back in December of last year, you know, we were anticipating maybe even getting vaccines sort of the early part of, of this year. And so the fact that we were able to secure some vaccines, uh, you know, in sort of uh, mid-December, late December, I think was actually a bonus in some ways. And uh, Major General Fortin and, and, and colleagues from province and territories were able to sort of ramp up, you know, as you say, almost do a sort of a proof of concept in terms of uh, setting up the clinics, the logistics and so on. And as uh, we've indicated that uh, we also know or knew or we know even now today that uh, this first trimester is a period of relative scarcity, you know, uh, uh, the vaccines are just being ramped up in terms of being produced, uh, you know, and uh, 
for a global market and uh, Canada, we have our place. Uh, uh, we've indicated, and uh, I, I, I certainly, uh, at this point, along with uh, Major General Fortin, uh, uh, agree that uh, the, the indications are still there for the, uh, uh, the, the delivery of the Pfizer vaccine, 4 million doses by the end of uh, March, and for the 2 million doses of Moderna by the end of March. Uh, we've had a few hiccups, but uh, overall, I think we're still on track. And uh, there's every uh, sort of anticipation that uh, once we get into April and, and further, we'll be getting uh, many, many more millions of doses. I think it's about 20 million doses uh, overall for the second uh, trimester and so on. So that's what I would offer as well at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Up. Yes, my follow-up question is, like, can you give Canadians a sense of why then, you know, because we hear so much about it, why are we so far behind the UK as an example? What are the main factors? Is it just supply? Um, or are there other things that, you know, when you see their numbers of percentage of, of who they've vaccinated so far and where we're at, can you get give Canadians a clear picture of why we're behind and whether we'll catch up or whether, you know, we just have to accept that we won't, our final vaccinations will just have to, you know, be later, that September will be what it is. But I, I guess I, I don't really get the big picture there on why we're so behind the UK. It's Dr. New, maybe I can start, you know, I, I think it's it's always a challenging to compare different countries because every country has its own uh, particular context, you know, geographical factors, uh, the way the healthcare system is, is, is set up uh, uh, and so on and so forth. So I think really, I think we just need to focus on concentrating on Canada. Uh, we're on, on track. Uh, certainly, uh, the, the doses are being rolled out, as, as we've uh, just indicated, uh, uh, making good headway in, in terms of uh, uh, our, our seniors and also our healthcare workers. And uh, as well uh, in the Northern Territories, I think uh, the role has gone very well, obviously challenging during our winter time. So I would say that uh, let's just focus on Canada. Can't really speak to the experiences in other countries. Uh, you know, I would say is that, uh, yes, uh, look at the UK, um, I don't want to comment or criticize any country. You see that the vaccine rollout is going in a certain direction. Uh, but if you look at the overall epidemiological situation in UK as well, you know they're having a tough time just with uh, COVID-19 in general. So you can look at one aspect of the overall picture, as you say, uh, in terms of the vaccine rollout. But you also need to take into account uh, what the overall situation is, uh, the extent of community transmission, uh, how, how the other public health measures uh, uh, have been put in place and are working and so on. Uh, so I think it's not just the vaccination itself that needs to be looked at. Thank you. Thank you. Prochaine question. Next question. The next question is from Raymond Fillion from TVA. You have the floor. Good afternoon. I have a question for uh, Major General Danny Fortin. Should we be worried about the fact that there are no numbers for actual shipments in the last weeks of March? You say that we're on track to achieve that 6 million doses from Moderna and Pfizer, but why is it then that we don't have exact numbers for that month? Thank you for the question, Raymond. So I've just given you some numbers for Moderna, and what I can say is that we're on the right path. We are communicating with provinces and territories, and we'll continue to do so regarding next shipments. You'll understand that there's a fair bit of synchronizing to do. We are working tirelessly to ensure that we get the right number of doses, and given all the factors involved, we're coordinating with territories and provinces, and we continue to do that, and we'll be able to confirm exact numbers for March from Pfizer soon. Now, in terms of Moderna, we are still working. In this area, we have the numbers for the next two weeks. We're working with three-week cycles, and we're making sure that we're on track for frequency and production. And production will really ramp up very soon. So both companies have assured us that we will be reaching our targets for the quarter, and we know that we're on track to get increased production and shipments over the next several months, and there will be several million more doses coming afterwards. So I'll repeat what I've said and what my colleagues have been saying since December. 
We're currently in a period of more restricted numbers for the first quarter. So we've done what we can to stretch out, and everyone has tried to stretch out the results of production and production given the demand. But production is increasing, and there is no indication that the opposite will take place. So I just want to assure you that we are tirelessly working to obtain the vaccines that we need, and we are confident, given our relationships with the companies, that these numbers will actually be concrete and be available soon. Question. So do you have those numbers yourself for March from Moderna for weekly shipments? Well, right now we're working with uh, forecasts for the next several weeks, but we'll be able to confirm these numbers for Canada soon. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Ryan Tumulty from National Post. Please go ahead. Yeah. Um, Starting next week, sort of as your details, we're going to see a lot more vaccines here than we've seen sort of really at any point during the pandemic. And that, according to your timetable, is just going to keep ramping up uh, into April. Uh, I'm wondering how confident you are that the provinces are prepared to administer, you know, potentially tens of thousands of doses every day um, and, and meet the demand for the incoming vaccine. We're in constant conversation with uh, provinces and territories. In fact, um, you will recall we had uh, uh, tabletop discussions, exercises, rehearsals with provinces, territories, and other stakeholders back on the 2nd and the 9th of December. There was also additional um, low-level uh, coordination efforts uh, through, uh, there have been throughout uh, the last uh, several weeks. Um, we are uh, well aware at all levels of the scope and size of what we're, we will face in the coming uh, weeks and months. Provinces are assuring us that they have uh, good plans in place. There are still um, uh, more work. There's still more work to do for sure at all levels in the coming weeks. Um, but uh, the provinces have solid plans for health human resource. Uh, uh, capacity in terms of uh, equipment, cold chain enabling equipment that's that will be positioned, reprioritized accordingly. So we're in a we're in a good place, and we'll have additional uh, coordination in the coming weeks, uh, leading into the month of April. Cool. Um, yeah, and and specifically um, on the, I know you've ordered low dead space syringes, and you've received some of them. Do you think the supply chain for those syringes, as well as the storage space that's necessary for the vaccines, will be able to stay ahead of the anticipated deliveries? So we have uh, millions of syringes in circulation. And I'll ask my colleague, uh, Ms. Reza, who was just about to, to answer, uh, I'll ask her to complete my answer. But uh, we're in a good place now with, uh, with this, uh, with the distribution of syringe. We continue to distribute as they become available uh, to uh, provinces uh, so that they are able to uh, administer as effectively as possible the six dose of uh, vaccines. And we'll continue to pay attention to distribution uh, to the right place at the right time of vaccines and ancillary supplies. I'll ask Ms. Reza to complete the from a procurement side. Thank you. I would just add that from the front end, we continue to uh, globally source the supply of these syringes. So we do have uh, supply coming in almost on a, a weekly basis of these uh, precious syringes. But over and above that, we continue to look for some contingency planning so that we can secure access to this supply so we can uh, deliver it to the provinces and territories. And in terms of storage, absolutely, I believe that there is a strong network across Canada uh, uh, storage depots that are able to actually house it and then send it out uh, for immediate use. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. 
Thank you. La prochaine question est de Hélène Bizetti. The next question is from Hélène Bizetti from Le Devoir. You have the floor. Good afternoon, Major General. I'd like to follow up on what my colleague Raymond Fillon asked you about. So to date, you've received 1.4 million doses, and you gave us the numbers that you're expecting by the end of March. It's about 1.9 million, so that gives us 3.3 million in all. So that's 2.7 missing for the last two weeks of the trimester. So are you being actually realistic in saying that we're on track? Well, perhaps I didn't quite express myself correctly. Over the next few weeks, we have about 1.4 million doses arriving on top of what we have already. So there are five weeks in the month of March, as you know. And we expect to receive similar quantities to what was already announced for the first two weeks of March. And we will be able to confirm those amounts soon and how it will be rolled out in the provinces. So, based on the information I have, it's very clear that we will have those four million by the end of March. But you said a six million with Moderna. I have a question for Ms. Reza. I, I'm sorry, I'm not sure you speak French. I don't remember. Um, I, I just wanted to know because with this uh, recognition that there's six doses in each vial, technically Pfizer can send 17% less uh, containers and still meet its obligation, uh, contractual obligation. So I was wondering, is there a clause in the contract that uh, would allow Canada to pay? up to 17% less for, for those dose. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that question and giving me an opportunity to clarify what I said at the beginning of the week. So earlier this week, the regulator authorized Pfizer-BioNTech to, to change the product monograph and label for COVID-19 vaccine. So it reflects, as we know, that each file contains six doses of vaccine. So provided that uh, Pfizer is meeting their requirement to us, which is to deliver the first 4 million doses by the end of March, and the vial size is deemed compliant by the regulator, there's no contractual issue as, as it relates to the transition from 5 to 6. We understand that the challenge for some end users is to consistently extract the six doses. Um, you know, we are working very closely with the provinces and territories on a transition approach that will focus on training and supply of the right type of syringe. So, uh, as I noted in my earlier answer, we're working around the clock to uh, secure the right type of syringes, and we will continue uh, to do so. So, in general, there is no uh, contractual clause, because, again, the point of emphasis is we buy doses. The doses are now in um, adherence with the regulatory change, and we are working to provide the tools to allow the provinces and territories to make that transition to make 100% use of the doses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. question is from Mia Rapson from the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Hi. Yeah. My first question is about the syringes. Um, I'm just wondering if any of those deliveries to the provinces have actually happened, but also knowing that the provinces are saying that they're having trouble, I think many of them have said half, maybe even at most 80% of the time they can get this sixth dose. If we can't, and it requires these syringes, if we can't get that sixth dose or we can't get the syringes, is there any clause in this agreement with Pfizer that would require them to replace the doses we can't get, especially if these syringes, which we know are hard to, hard to come by, don't arrive as, as we need them? Mr. General Fortin, I think uh, it requires three of us to answer your question. So I, I'll speak to the front part of it. We are distributing uh, syringes. Uh, they have been distributed to all provinces or in the process of by the 15th. Uh, in some cases, they will arrive in the coming couple of days. So all provinces will have sufficient quantities uh, for the next several weeks. And more are coming and more will be distributed as they become available. Yeah, it's, Doctor, you know, they can add from the public health perspective. Uh, I'm not sure that you say reports from the provinces, territories. I, I would say that uh, that was maybe in the past uh, in terms of uh, their experience using maybe a, a range of different syringes and, and so on. But uh, certainly, I think that we've moved forward now that the monograph has changed to indicate that there are uh, six doses that can be reliably and consistently uh, extracted from each file. 
uh, we're supporting the province's territories. We just had a webinar yesterday in terms of a, a training and sort of a, a sort of ensuring a, that the, there's good technique uh, from a, sort of the vaccinator perspective. Uh, I think we had a very good turnout. I think it was about uh, close to 2,000, 1,800 participants on that webinar. That was in English. We have another one in French uh, tomorrow. And we'll we'll be also uh, moving forward with additional sort of educational support. So that's on the on sort of the human uh, factor. And of course, uh, from an equipment perspective, uh, as uh, Major General Faulkner, I'm sure uh, uh, Ms. Reza will also uh, speak to. Uh, we're we're working closely with the province of territories to make sure that we have quote the, the right equipment out there uh, in terms of minimizing uh, sort of the wastage you might get from a vial by using the low dead volume syringes. Thank you. Paula. Sure. I, well, I didn't get the, the part about whether or not there's a clause in the contract uh, if we can't get these doses or we can't get the syringes. But my follow-up question, I was just wondering if you could walk us through specifically how many doses of Pfizer and how many doses of Moderna have we actually received to date so that we can actually, because we can, uh, the website hasn't been updated. And I just want to make sure that we're working with the, the right numbers of how many we've received and how many we still need to, for them to hit their contract for the first quarter. Yeah, certainly. Uh, so the website will be updated shortly. I think we are uh, scheduled to update it tomorrow now that we have more line of sight on the numbers. Uh, so today I'm tracking that we have distributed 1.33 million doses of uh, Pfizer, uh, Pfizer alone. Um, so with, um, and that includes this week, if you count uh, 400 plus every week moving forward, uh, you will meet the 4 million uh, in the first quarter. Uh, that's certainly the projections and the numbers that I said earlier with 403, 475, 444 twice. Uh, and then we're on that we're on that trajectory to the end of March with similar quantities. Thank you. Catherine Lévesque from the Press Canadian. You have the floor. Thank you. I'd like to come back to the numbers of doses because it doesn't quite add up for me. As my colleague Hélène pointed out, based on the numbers you gave us today and based on what we expect to receive over the next four weeks, that adds up to about 3.3 million doses. And you said hypothetically we would have the same numbers for the last three weeks of March. And so even if there are those numbers from Pfizer and another shipment of 250,000 doses from Moderna, it still doesn't add up to 6 million. So can you please explain how we're going to get to that 6 million doses? Because right now, that those numbers don't seem to add up. Thank you. Of course, clearly, we need to update our uh, website, and now that we have more certainty in terms of the flow of vaccines over the next few weeks, we'll be able to do that. Now, we've received 1.33 million doses from Pfizer-BioNTech. Based on the math, that's 1.76 million doses. And we have 1.33 million left for the three weeks in March. And so regardless how you add it up or divide it, that gives us 4 million doses by the 31st of March. Now, I can confirm to you that we are on track. Now, in terms of Moderna, the total of Moderna doses to date, including what is coming, it, it leaves 1.3 million that will still have to be delivered in March. The manufacturer has told us that we will reach that target. We have no reason to not believe that. We, we are in ongoing discussions with them in terms of production, in terms of their delivery 
every schedule. So we expect to go to two week cycles in deliveries soon. So there will be two deliveries in March, as I said earlier. I think I said that in my last uh, press conference. So we are in discussions about the exact quantities. And when those numbers are solid, we will be able to closely coordinate with provinces and territories in terms of the rollout and in terms of disclosure of the numbers. Thank you. Thank you for those details. So can you tell me when we will move to those two-week uh, delivery cycles with Moderna? And are you confident that we will get those two million doses from Moderna by the end of the quarter? Because you seem to leave some room for doubt. Well, Moderna has assured us that we will have received the 2 million total by the end of March. That is the information I am working off today. That is the information the Government of Canada is working with. And we are confident that we are working well with Moderna. We have an excellent relationship with them. And if there were any problems, they would raise them, as they did when they had to adjust their previous shipments. We expect, though, that their production capacity will significantly ramp up over the next few weeks, and we have been told that there will be two shipments in March, two deliveries, and I think it's at that point that we will move to two-week shipment cycles. Now, I'm, I'm speculating right now, I can't, so I can't tell you exactly what will happen in April, but we will be coming back to you in a press conference to confirm that. Merci. Thank you. Next question. Thank you. The next question is from Abigail Biman from Global News. Please go ahead. Hi. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, Dr. New, I heard you say earlier that uh, it's hard or we shouldn't compare our country to another country. But in the big picture, Canada's 38th in the world when it comes to our rollout. So I'm wondering how you justify this. Uh, maybe you don't want to compare to one, but there's, you know, 37 other countries on the list. Why have we not been able to procure, distribute, and administer vaccines at the rate of more than 30 other countries in the world? Well, like I said before, it, it's difficult to compare countries with different uh, factors in play. Uh, I think really uh, the focus should be, uh, you know, what we're doing here in Canada. Of course, we're always looking to see a uh, what can be adjusted, uh, as we indicated earlier, we recognize that, that this is the most complex uh, immunization campaign uh, ever undertaken in the history of our country. And so, you know, there will be uh, uh, things that come up, things that we'll have to adjust and, and be flexible uh, about. And I think uh, we're on track. Uh, uh, we recognize as well that, that there would be a scarcity of, of supply because of the global market, uh, you know, in the first trimester. So I, I think, uh, yes, you know, uh, you could compare us now to other countries, but I think uh, what's maybe more important is to see uh, what happens uh, uh, following the first trimester, which we indicated very clearly would be a, a period of relative scarcity. And once, uh, hopefully, we anticipate with optimism that we will get many more millions of doses uh, uh, come uh, come uh, April and onwards. And, the, and then uh, the, sort of the vaccine rollout across the country, I think uh, certainly we anticipate will be ramping up. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks. I, I also wanted to ask about the uh, federal quarantine hotels. People are complaining about poor communication and a lack of transparency around their stays here. Uh, and some of that secrecy is then feeding misinformation online. So I'm wondering if there's a plan to improve communication around how and why people are being held in these facilities moving forward. Okay. Uh, maybe we, we can probably impact that at, at, a, at a future press conference. Uh, certainly, uh, I think in terms of what we're doing at, at our international border, uh, uh, the federal government is taking a much more, uh, I think, a stronger stance in terms of uh, 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 incoming travelers to Canada. Uh, we all know about the pre-departure test requirement now for air travelers. Uh, we're looking actively at what measures uh, uh, could also be uh, looked at in terms of our, our land border uh, crossing points. We're also looking now, obviously, as you mentioned, uh, with our, our quarantine facilities. Uh, I can't speak to individual incidents, uh, but uh, certainly uh, uh, the thinking there is that uh, people who come into Canada, that we've always indicated, need to have a clear quarantine plan that, that meets uh, our expectations for them to, quote, safely quarantine themselves, but also uh, 
not not be in a, a situation where they might uh, be putting others at risk. You know, for example, if uh, you know they plan to co go back home and uh, uh, someone else living at the home is uh, is very very elderly or a healthcare worker, certainly that wouldn't uh, meet the criteria for a, our, our sort of a quarantine plan expectations. And so, in those types of circumstances, yes, the, those individuals uh, would uh, would probably be directed to a federal quarantine facility uh, uh, to, to you know to 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 manage their their quarantine. So. Uh, not getting to specifics, uh, I would say that uh, there are some details and uh, and other uh, aspects of our, our uh, I think, our, our stance at the international border that uh, will be, I think, uh, uh, unfolding and uh, certainly will be indicating that in the, in the days and weeks to come. Thank you. Merci. So the communication is an important part of that. Merci. La prochaine question est de Laurence Martin de Radio-Canada. Laurence Martin, Radio-Canada. You have the floor. Oui, bonjour. Ma première question est pour le Major Good General afternoon. Fortin. Good afternoon. My question is for Major General Fortin. Over the next few weeks and months, can we expect to see any more delays in the shipments, or do you think that's now behind us? Oui, merci. Thank you. That would really be pure speculation on my part. We have said several times, and the manufacturers have told us that there can be production fluctuations, as we saw with the two manufacturers recently. However, there is every indication that Pfizer and Moderna, and by Pfizer and Moderna uh, will be ramping up actually significantly their production. But I can't give you specifics. However, we have no reason to expect any major production problems in the future. Thank you. My second question is for Dr. New. You said that only 0.5% of Canadians have received a second dose. However, more than 2% have received a first dose. Are you worried about the time period between the first and the second dose might be become even greater in the provinces? No, uh, no. Now, numbers tell you what are happening what is happening in provinces and territories, but it is up to the experts and the people who are responsible for the vaccines to work with this. We continue to speak with counterparts in our provinces, provinces and territories, rather, and we continue to discuss about that optimal period between the first and the second dose. Pfizer and Moderna, with the approval of Health Canada, have said that that can be about 21 to 28 days, and we're also seeing what is happening happening in other countries, for example, like Israel. There are indications that even if that time period is longer, you actually get good protection with that first dose, and a longer interval is not serious for those who have been already vaccinated, because it means that we can vaccinate an even greater number of people. But the situation obviously evolves based on the science and the evidence, and we are constantly exchanging information with our counterparts in other countries, including Israel, in order to learn more and use lessons learned in order to have best practices here in Canada. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. Thank you. The next question is from Cormac McSweeney from City News. Please go ahead. Hi, yeah. Uh, Major General Denny Fortin, um, I believe you might have been asked about this in French, and I apologize. I've been in and out due to filing responsibilities. But uh, in English, uh, just on the Moderna vaccine, you gave um, pretty clear numbers for Pfizer, how much we re received to date, how much we're getting, and how much we, we are expecting towards the end of, the, of March to meet that goal. Um, what about Moderna? How many have we received so far, and uh, how much are we expecting for them to make up in March in order to meet their goal of 2 million doses? Uh, thank you. Um, we have over half a million to date uh, Moderna uh, doses. I'd have to uh, verify if that's actually a true statement. 
Um, and with the next shipment, uh, we will will be at about 1.3 million. I think I mentioned that before. 1.3 million uh, remaining for the month of March. And um, at this time, we expect it to be delivered. We have been told that we could expect to have this delivered uh, over two different shipments in the month of March. Uh, the quantities per shipment is unknown at this time. Um, we expect to have that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and when we have that and we have socialized this with provinces and territories, we'll be able to bring that to um, a, a future press conference. And just as a follow-up, this is for Dr. New. Um, there's a story in the CBC today about provinces only using about a fraction of the rapid tests that they have received so far. Um, the best being PEI using 25% of, of the tests that they've received. Are you concerned about provinces not using um, a vast majority of the rapid tests they've received? And what will that mean moving forward as we see variants take hold in a lot of these jurisdictions? Well, I will say is that uh, certainly the federal government uh, has done its part in terms of acquiring uh, these uh, rapid tests. And I think uh, just to be more uh, sort of detail, we're talking probably about the antigen tests. Uh, uh, that's, which is a different type of, uh, I think, technology uh, with a different uh, level of performance compared to uh, what we've all always talked about, uh, the gold standard uh, PCR molecular test. Uh, uh, they've been distributed. I think uh, over 18 million uh, of these sort of the antigen tests have been distributed to the provinces and territories. And uh, we've also given good support uh, with respect to guidance. Uh, our laboratory uh, colleagues have uh, put forward good guidance in terms of how these tests are best used. Uh, not sort of in isolation, but as part of an overall testing uh, strategy and approach. Uh, you know, for example, uh, maybe on a regular basis uh, in, a, in a screening uh, uh, type of way, uh, for example, in long-term care facilities, maybe other workplaces where there's a high risk of exposure uh, due to uh, close proximity and so on. So I think um, uh, we certainly anticipate that, that the provinces uh, with, the, with the guidance and also I think uh, uh, gaining a certain level of experience and comfort uh, with, uh, with uh, this, uh, this type of test, uh, which is, I think, relatively new, maybe uh, compared to the molecular test. Uh, uh, we anticipate that the, the, the use uh, uh, should be increasing, especially in, in settings where we know are certainly high-risk settings, long-term care facilities. Uh, 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 we've had indications in our discussions with the provinces and territories that they are ramping up. I understand that the several provinces uh, are really uh, are moving forward uh, very, I think, vigorously in, in terms of implementing uh, uh, these types of tests in those uh, in those settings, uh, long-term care facilities in particular. So I think uh, it's on the right track, and uh, we're looking forward to uh, having uh, these types types of tests uh, being a more widespread use, obviously, uh, to uh, to help us, uh, as you say, uh, monitor, uh, make sure that we are identifying people uh, uh, who possibly are affected with COVID-19, but certainly uh, as well, uh, uh, it's also part of our overall approach to uh, uh, monitor the uh, maybe emergence of the variants here in Canada. Thank you. La prochaine question Next est question. de Anne-Caroline Desplanques du Journal de Montréal. À vous la parole. Journal de Montréal. Oui, bonjour. Ms. Desplanques. Thank you. I'd like to speak about the syringes again. Will this syringe, this, these special low dead space syringes, be necessary to administer the Moderna vaccines? And what kind of timeline do you see if that's the if that's the case? Ms. Reza from Public Works. Well, I can address the second part of your question. We've already ordered more than 72 million syringes and delivery shipments are happening. In terms of the timeline, uh, it started at the end of January and we expect to receive all uh, syringes alors, by the uh, end of summer. On pense avoir de, de ces au so we will have many prochaines... of these types of syringes in Merci. Canada Merci. over the coming weeks. Thank you. Merci. Thank you. Follow-up? 
Well, there was another question in there about Moderna. I asked if the Moderna vaccines require these special low dead space syringes for administration of the vaccine. Well, I will attempt to answer that question. However, I think that question would be better posed to Health Canada because it falls under their authority. So all I can say actually is that I'm not familiar with this. Well, is there anyone from Health Canada who can answer then? Can someone answer this? Dr. New here, perhaps I could begin. For both vaccines, there, there's always a little bit of overfill. That is to say that there is more liquid than required for the actual vaccine. Now, for Pfizer, as we have pointed out, the numbers are very precise. The vial contains 0.45 milliliters. And you have to add 1.8 uh, milliliters of a saline solution. And so the total then is 2.25 milliliters. And each dose is 0.3. So it's very important to have these exact numbers and the these uh, low dead space syringes in order to minimize waste every time you're taking a, a dose out. Now, in terms of Moderna vials, I don't know if we have the same situation as in Pfizer's case. But if we have syringes that can minimize waste, when you withdraw a dose from any vial, that's always a good thing. But uh, perhaps Mr. Fortin has something to add. I would simply add that for now, it's very important to have the appropriate special syringes, these low dead space syringes, so that we get the maximum extracted from our Pfizer vaccines. And that's why we have distributed these syringes. There's no indication from Moderna to date nor from health professionals, what would be required to get uh, added doses from a vial. If that situation changes, then we will adjust accordingly. But for now, uh, we have been given no indications about this. Thank you. The next question is from Tanda McCharles from Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, this question, well, actually, I'm not sure who can answer it. I'm hoping you can answer it. Um, Minister Anand has told us that uh, Canada's COVAX um, supply, the, the, the shipments that Canada might get, the AstraZeneca doses that we could get, would be coming from South Korea. And uh, what I'm trying to understand is where Canada's AstraZeneca supply under the main contact we have with AstraZeneca once it's approved, if it is approved, where that supply will come from. And I'm trying to understand what it means that you have an application from AstraZeneca on the website that I understand Health Canada is treating like a separate vaccine um, from India, what that means. Does that mean that our contracted supply from AstraZeneca would necessarily come from India. Can someone explain to me what the what that India connection in the AstraZeneca application is? And if there's another country where we expect our contracted supply to come from? Oh, it, it's Ariane Reza from uh, Public Works. So perhaps I'll start and then uh, hand off the, the question. Um, I, I think it's really important when we talk about supply chains and, and contracts that we understand two, two pieces of information. One is that the supply chain is considered commercially co uh, confidential. So we don't normally um, explicitly talk about it uh, publicly. However, that being said, I think that there's a real opportunity to reassure people in terms of supply that it's the regulator through the regulatory submission 
that the various pharmaceutical companies um, submit to them that reviews the the, regular, the the manufacturing process and where the vaccines are coming from, that then is the, the pivot for where we can get our supply from. So I wouldn't want to leave the impression that contracts limit where the supply comes from. It actually uses uh, the flexibility from the, the regulator and the supply process to be able to get supply from wherever it meets Health Canada's regulatory approval. So, uh, yeah, yeah Doctor, you were just going to uh, basically uh, concur uh, to, with what uh, Ms. Reza says is that uh, at the present time, the AstraZeneca vaccine is not approved in Canada. Uh, the company has made a submission, uh, obviously, to uh, Health Canada regulators, and uh, as part of that package of information and data, which uh, obviously uh, others are not privy to, including myself. Uh, there are uh, included. I would uh, anticipate uh, information about as. Uh, Ms. Reza indicated uh, about the manufacturing, the sites, and so on, and that uh, would be uh, all taken into account uh, by uh, Health Canada in terms of uh, their approval process. And then, depending on uh, on what uh, their approval is, that will then, uh, I think, in, in in some ways determine, uh, you know, uh, how uh, uh, Canada will be uh, procuring its its uh, its approved vaccines. Thank you. And I think for one last follow-up, Kanda. Thank you. There are no further questions registered. No, we, we, we have room for one follow-up. Oh, I'm sorry. Kanga? Just, I'd just like someone just to clarify. Did I understand you to say that Moderna has not asked permission to, an ex to extract an extra dose from its vial? Because I understand its vials are 10 doses per vial. And also, Manitoba today is saying that it's going to buy, um, it's bought uh, 2 million doses of Providence Technologies vaccine, which I guess is still in very early clinical trials. Are you encouraging provinces at this point to go it alone and strike their own agreements with um, companies? It's Dr. New. I, I can just start on one part of the answer. Uh, uh, certainly, uh, we we understand respect that, that that there is a the single regulator at the federal level uh, for all vaccines that uh, uh, you know wish to uh, you know be approved in Canada for use. So I'm not quite sure I understand in terms of uh, how uh, individual jurisdictions uh, may enter into any sort of agreement with a uh, sort of uh, sort of at this point uh, sort of unapproved uh, products. Uh, I think uh, we need to wait for 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 Health Canada to. Uh, you know, get a submission from whatever company for whatever product and go through the uh, sort of the very uh, strict and uh, regulatory process uh, for approval. Uh, after at that point, I would also say, and certainly uh, Ms. Reza and Major General Fortan can speak to it. I think that there's always, uh, I say, economies of scale and that it's, it's always uh, in some ways better uh, for a quote that uh, sort of the government of Canada, you know, as a bulk uh, sort of buyer on behalf of Canada and the problems of territories to, uh, to enter those types of agreements. But that's just sort of my... Uh, my first reaction, I would certainly defer to Ms. Reza and Major General Fortin for uh, to elaborate on that. Thank you. I have no specific comment on that. Just say to to bring to the attention that you know, the federal government uh, stepped into doing consolidated buying and PPE. I think it's the same approach that we have done with vaccine. Uh, provinces and territories continue to do their their own things in in this element. And just to circle back to your question about Moderna, this question is best placed to the regulator. To my knowledge, they have not um, entered into similar discussions in terms of going to more doses per vial. That being said, I want to underscore that we're planning for these eventualities. When we look at different vaccines coming on, we have to be able to be flexible and have the supplies and the training and the tools that we need to be able to actually uh, operationalize and get those extra doses out as the, as the case may be. Thank you. Well, thank you, Siski. Uh, this wraps up our technical briefing for this morning. If you have additional questions, uh, please contact the Media Relations team at the Public Health Agency of Canada at hc.media. If you have any other questions, then you can contact Media Relations at the Public Health Agency, HC.
dot media dot sc at canada dot ca. Thank you very much. Thank you. Merci. The conference has now ended. Please disconnect your lines at this time, and we thank you for your participation. La conférence est maintenant terminée. Veuillez s'il vous plaît raccrocher votre ligne. Et merci à tous les participants qui se sont joints. This conference.